Hi everyone, welcome to a YouTube live. I am going to read a little bit out of Florence Scovel Shin's book. This is a wonderful book. It is four books in one and I'm going to read from the chapter called Faith and it is Your Word is Your Wand is the book that it comes from. Okay, so Florence says, hope looks forward. Faith knows it has already received and acts accordingly. In my classes, I often emphasize the importance of digging ditches or preparing for the thing asked for, which shows active faith and brings the demonstration to pass. See the game of life and how to play it, page 13. Now, a man in my class whom I called the life of the party because he was always tried to find a question I couldn't answer. But he never succeeded, asked, why is it then a lot of women who prepare hope chests never get married? I replied, because it's a hope chest and not a faith chest. The prospective bride also violates law in telling others about it. Her friends come in and sit on the hope chest and either doubt or hope she'll never succeed. <laughs> I can see some of your comments popping up. I'm just going to finish this story and then I'll start answering some questions. Okay. Prayer to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. The student should never talk of a demonstration until it has gelled or come to pass on the external. So a hope chest should become a faith chest and be kept from the public eye. And the word spoken for the divine selection of a husband under grace and in a perfect way. Those whom God hath joined together no thought can put asunder. So Florence is huge with affirmations. So I am going to read a couple. And then I will start to go into the questions that are starting to pop up. Affirmations. Adverse appearances work for my good, for God utilizes every person and every situation to bring to me my heart's desire. Hindrances are friendly and obstacles spring boards. I now jump into my good. One more. As I am one with the undivided one, I am one with my undivided good. So I'm going to leave it there. Many of you know that I am big on Neville, but Florence, this book in particular, you can see how old it is, was my first love. So if you want to do some good reading, this is The Wisdom of Florence Scovel Shin. It's four books in one. Fabulous reading for those who want a change from Neville or something a little bit different. So, Zach, you have said, you were my first coach and I finally understand I need to love me. But really, how? Meditations don't work. Well, Zach, I've actually just put together a self-love course. I only just uploaded it this week. If you want to go into how exactly that course goes through, exactly how to do it, if you are not gelling with meditations per se, it might be a good step-by-step -step for you to have a look at. Okay, there is in the course physical self-love, mental self-love, emotional self-love and looking at the spiritual. So the four separate parts and it breaks it down in separate four clear sections. So if you want to try that, that's there for you. Otherwise, um probably need to do some coaching one-on-one -on -one. you know you could do some email coaching if you don't want to spend too much money and you know do a bit more of a personal one-on-one -on -one way of working because sometimes these suggested things don't work for everyone it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you it just means perhaps the ways that have been suggested on YouTube are not the way that you are able to absorb and learn things easily. Okay. Laszlo. Hi, darling. Thank you for your good wishes. 
Alexis, hello. Ignitio, hello. How to manifest a romantic person. Have a look at, if you want a specific person, have a look at the specific person playlist, success stories, or if it's someone brand new, have a look at the new relationship success stories. So all the information's there and you can access that for free, Ignitio. Okay, but in a nutshell, if you are in a state of love and you radiate love out, then love will come to you. That's really how it works. So the better you are at getting into a state of love, how do you do that? There are many videos where I've explained how to get into a state of love. Look at the shorts and put keyword love. And there is a 30 days to more love like a playlist where you can do one little video a day. So you might want to work through that to help you. Okay, Laszlo, when it comes to person whom you had, let's say, a very complicated relationship with that finished very bad, is it okay to try to manifest having a final confrontation to end that once and for all? Well, I don't know. Laszlo, why would you want a final confrontation? sometimes that just blows things up and makes things worse and then you can't get that off your mind for some days. So I would probably try the spotlight meditation, which is about saying everything you need to say to that person through the meditation and then not necessarily in person. I would try that first, okay? Now, Ah, uh, yes, Sam. You have asked, why do I keep getting in my own way? Why don't I fully trust, although I know what I want is mine? I find myself trying to make it happen instead of just trusting, believing in myself and allowing. Well, trust is a big thing. It's easy to say just trust and let go, but it isn't the easiest thing to do. It's something that we have to grow into and let go of control, let go of trying to force. There are some videos I did on don't force anything. I would have a look at those. And also I would have a look at the self-love success stories playlist on my main channel because that really shows you a lot of people that have trusted and moved forward because their self-love was good. It's like we try and push and force because we think that the outside is going to give us something to fix the inside, but it never works that way. You really have to fix the inside and then the outside corrects itself because the outside is a reflection of where you're at, okay? There's also, Yi Sam, there is a trust playlist. I would look at that as well and that's there for free for you to have a look, okay? Just put the keyword, go to YouTube and put my name and then put the word trust or trust playlist or, you know, don't force, things like that. And these videos that I'm mentioning will come up for you, okay? Alexis, you've said I miss him so much. I know my flaws in me and that's what I've been focusing on since the breakup. Good. It's okay to miss people, but missing people too much tells you that you think love is over there and you want to get more love back here. This is the whole illusion of love. Love is not out there. We're just not good at connecting with it on the inside. But it is an inside job and it is something that we can get better at through sitting in meditation, through being grateful, being in nature, through spending time with people we love, through doing the things that really help us to feel better about ourselves, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, exercise, eating healthy food, all of that helps the mind become more clear because I hear every single week how exhausted many of you are. And when you are very exhausted, it really is where you are not able to focus mentally to do affirmations, to do meditations, to do any of these things that we need to do to help us to focus on the things that we love to do, manifesting techniques, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. My pleasure, Yisam. Bianca, 
Hello, Agnes. I love your meditations. They are so helpful. I've been trying to incorporate affirmations to my life, but not sure how often or how long I should say them. As a rule of thumb, Bianca, I think that the people that I see have the best success rate, and also this includes myself, is if you can aim for four days a week and you can aim for between 250 and 500 a day, I'm not talking about each affirmation, I'm talking about in total, then that takes about 15 minutes to do 250. It takes about 300, uh, 30 minutes to do 500. So you are able to break them down into 15, two times 15 minutes, 15 minutes in the morning. People do it on the way to work. They do it at the gym. They do it on a walk in nature. I mean, I often do a thousand affirmations when I go for a walk for an hour. It's not hard. It's easy. I'm just looking at people's gardens and I'm just affirming the things I want. So it's better to give your mind a job to do than to just let it roam around and it does what it wants <laughs> because with so many of us, it picks something negative. Okay. So try that four days a week, 250 to 500 a day. And then have two to three days off where you just go and have fun, go and do things that make you feel good that have nothing to do with affirmations or law of attraction. Okay. Now, I'm just going to switch off the Wi Fi on my other device just in case it's dragging and using up the Wi Fi just so it's nice and clear. Let me switch that off. And I'm just going to switch it off on my phone as well. Just bear with me for a second, people. Okay, so Dawn, you've said hello, Agnes. Hello, Dawn. Loved your Ho'oponopono insightful approach. If we want to clear space for a specific person, he's still grieving the passing of his previous partner. How would this work? Good question. While I think of it, Dawn, there is an amazing interview. It's really old now. If you go to YouTube, put in Dr. D-R space H-E-W space L-E-N, Dr. Hugh Len, then put the word interview, then a space, Carla, as in the woman's name, C-A-R-L-A -A, space, and then 2001. That interview at the beginning, it's in another language, but about a minute or two in, the rest of it's in English. Okay, so just fast forward. And that interview is amazing about Ho'oponopono. It's one I go back to again and again and again over the years, okay? So try listening to that and see what notes you can take from that because there's so much amazing good information in there. I would listen to that and then now I'll answer your question as well. If we wanted to clear a space for the SP, how would you do that? Well, you would be saying... I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. Two, I'm sorry I'm wanting this to go faster. I'm sorry that he's grieving and this is really affecting him. I'm sorry that I'm feeling uh, impatience. I'm sorry that I'm feeling I'm not getting enough, I want more. I'm sorry that I'm feeling dissatisfied. I'm not in a state of love. I'm sorry I'm not able to hold the state of love. Please forgive me for being dissatisfied. Please forgive me for not holding a state of love. Please forgive me for being in a state of I'm not getting enough, I want more. Please forgive me for not being fully relaxed and content in my life how it is right now without the SP in the way that I would like it to be. I love you. I love you how you are. I love you now. I love you how things can really just be between me and me and that I can find my own sense of love within. I love you that I'm doing this work on myself and I wasn't before. I love you that this information has come to me and that I'm able to apply some of it some of the time. I love you for your effort. I love you for your ability to change. I love you for your ability to become someone who is open to changing and improving their internal life mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Thank you. Thank you for the knowledge, the new knowledge to help me move forward. Thank you for the learning that I'm having between me and my specific person, irregardless of how this is right now between us. 
thank you for the lessons with my specific person as this person is one of my greatest teachers of all time because this is a relationship that causes me quite a bit of angst and suffering. Thank you for learning about surrender. Thank you for understanding, allowing. Thank you for understanding, letting go and not forcing. And I'm only doing these in-between bits so you can hear the thought process, Dawn, but really what you're doing is you're just saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. But these in-between bits are really what you are implying when you are moving through the whole ponopono because it's about surrendering and getting to a place of humility and back to that zero resting point where you are in a loving state. So it doesn't matter what he's got going on. You know, I remember there's a video that I did. If you go to the Ho'opono playlist, Ho'opono Pono playlist, there's one called, it's like, um, it's got a title like Quirky Ho'opono Pono or Odd Ho'opono Pono Success Story or something. And it's a story where I was actually at the bank and, I mean, I, I will share it in more detail in that video. I'll give you just a little summary. But I'm at the bank. I'm concerned in my mind about someone that I love dearly who's in hospital and they're going through an operation and I'm distracted with a bit of worry and concern. I'll be honest, I was. So I go to the machine. I punch in 100 pounds. The money comes out. I'm totally distracted. I put my wallet in my bag and I didn't take the money. Anyway, this guy comes up and he taps me on the shoulder and he says, the machine just took your money back in. And I said, oh, I said, look, I'm distracted with someone in hospital. And he said to me, when we are observing the sickness or the disease or the operation in someone else, the sickness is in us in that moment. And he taught me something. He has no idea how profound that was because I already, this was only like a year ago. This was well and truly when I knew about Ho'oponopono and Neville. It wasn't like years before. So it's the same, Dawn. If you're observing the grief, if you're observing the sickness, the sickness is in us in that moment because we are in a state of anguish. Uh, we might be in a state of torment worry, concern, I'm not going to get what I want because they're distracted with this. Whatever it is in that moment, we are not in a comfortable, emotional, secure state. So the work is you have to clear the space within you in terms of relaxing, surrendering into it and clearing your I want more, I want more, I'm not getting enough, da 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 whatever's going on, you see. So, yeah, if you want to have a listen to that story in more detail, it was a very interesting story because he has no idea how profound that was, what he said to me, because I understood Ho'oponopono and he was saying it to the exactly the right person. Profound. <laughs> Hi, Manel. My pleasure, my sweet little chicken. <laughs> nice to see you. Wrong. You have said, hello, wrong. I'm wondering if it's possible to meet one's own romantic needs while manifesting a relationship, like taking yourself on romantic dates. Yes, I used to do that. I used to create a little basket with picnic stuff in it and I'd go and light a candle and I'd sit on the beach on my own at night or in the evening at dusk, you know, and it's like it's not about doing it and going, oh, I'm just doing this because I'm trying to wait for my partner. It's actually going there and having a beautiful spiritually quiet wonderful moment between you and source and the beach or wherever it is that you go so yeah definitely I mean I, I used to take myself to the movies on my own I used to do a lot of things that I would have loved to have done with someone else but I thought you know what I'm just going to do them on my own in the meantime and then eventually that seat next to me at the movies filled in the bed next to me in where I live it filled in the closet in my bedroom, it filled in. So it's like all these things that you would like to do with someone else. It's remembering too, being single isn't a disease. It's so many of us feel like, oh, I'm single, this must be something wrong with me, you see. And it's it's not. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just you're single for now. 
I can tell you it's better to be single and alone, which is different than lonely, than with someone and you are having a horrendously bad time. So, you know, enjoy spreading out on the bed and it just being there for you. Enjoy watching the movies you want to watch and not having to negotiate with someone. Look at the things that you would be giving up if you go from being single to a relationship. That's a different way of looking at it rather than I'm just waiting to get into the relationship and I'm just filling in time, you see. Hello, Lisa Marie from London Town. I'm in London Town too right now. I just got here on about five days ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, Sam, I don't have any that are privated. Um, all the meditations are public, They're, unless I've done one for a specific person and it's a personal meditation they've paid for. Those would be the only ones that would be privated, okay? So I can't send you anything because there's nothing there that is private. Koala, hello, and yes, when, do I, when I do self-love meditations lately or heart chakra meditations, I'm noticing things getting worse in my relationship lately. After doing them, any ideas what's going on? Well, sometimes things come to the surface to be cleared. So it might not be necessarily about the meditation itself. Ask yourself, what are my negative thoughts, feelings, and beliefs I have about this person? Because our repetitive habitual things that we project mentally, the mental diet we have about them, that can affect what goes on between us, you see. So maybe you can write down, what do I think repeatedly about this person? That's negative. Obviously, you think some positive things. You don't need to write those down, but the negative ones, okay? Yes, Sam, how to consistently live in the end more throughout the day. You don't have to do it all day. You don't. I think sometimes a lot of this law of attraction stuff and manifesting stuff, it's you don't go to the gym all day. You don't go to work all day. It's doing things and then letting it go. Get on with, if you're cooking, focus on cooking. If you're eating, focus on eating. Be in the present moment. Living in the end, you can do it in the morning, you can do it in the middle of the day, you can do it after work or whatever, but you don't have to do it all day, okay? Tiva, I've recently discovered my SP is taken, had no idea prior to deciding on manifesting this individual. <laughs> well, at least you got a smile emoji there. Do I persist? In this case, of course, self-love is still defo my priority. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, you can go one of either ways. If your SP is taken, I would step back graciously. If you want to continue to do some inner work, that's up to you as in living in the end. However, personally, and this is only my personal opinion, if someone is taken, I would leave things alone temporarily until such time where they become available and then you can start again. I think it's important to think, okay, if I was with someone, would I want someone trying to manifest the person I'm with? So it's treat, it's the golden rule. There is a video that I did on the golden rule, which Neville talks about, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So it's not that this person might not become available, but in the meantime, I would step back work on your self-love like you're doing and learn to radiate love out and see what happens. There's a meditation called generating love. So I would perhaps, there's one called generating love and there's one called, I'm just going to put the light on here, it's a bit dark, um, generating love and there's another one called amazing love. So I would try that, okay? Oh, that's a bit blinding. Let me try a different light. Okay, that's better. So let me continue. Lisa Marie, Tiva, great question because Neville talks of the golden rule and don't take from others. Curious to hear Agnes reply. Oh, that's so interesting. We're on the same page. 
Lisa, we have definitely um, are in sync on that one. I think it is a really, really good rule because if you don't, I think, take heed of these things and you still go for things, I think in the end we often experience the other side of it, which is having someone do to you what you did. So never do to others what you don't want boomeranging coming back to you. You know, in Australia, the boomerang is a thing that the Aboriginals throw and you send it out and it comes back. It is a very, very, very symbolic thing that I think is very reflective of what can happen to us in real life because it's all energy. So whatever you try and get from someone, take from someone. And there's stories in Florence and Neville where people have tried to get something off someone else and the effects or the end results that have been created, you may get the thing, but it comes to you with loaded with misery. So be mindful, okay? Just be mindful. That's all. All right. Yes, Manel, you can ask for a job hunt related question. Absolutely. This isn't just an SP relationship Q&A. This is for everybody to ask different things. Okay. A young villain, will the specific person meditations work even if you barely have communication with the person anymore? Well, yes, and I will say be mindful of this. When you're doing an SP meditation, are you coming from a place of love and giving or are you coming from a place of getting? Okay? It's not just what you do on the surface that matters. It's what's loaded underneath, as in your intention, your emotion. Are you coming from neediness? Are you coming from just wanting to have a beautiful connection and you're here to give? So look at what's driving what you're doing, the stuff underneath. Okay? That's an important thing. Good question. Rose, my pleasure, my lovely. I'm going to be doing more now. I haven't been doing any for about three months because I've been in Australia and then doing them is at 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning and I'm not a morning person. I'm an night owl. So this is the best time to cover many of you around the world um, except for parts of Asia. So yeah, it's just I can cover more ground when I'm in London. So I'll be doing, I'm aiming to do one every week to two weeks so that I can answer where you're at and where you're up to and what you would like from me because I know what I'd like to give you, but that's not necessarily what you need and what you want. So if I can do these for you, then you get your answers to the specific questions. Okay. Now, Laszlo, now that I've got this job and now I'm very well, mostly earning good amounts of money, yet I'm still getting bothered about many of those things I wanted to get rid of by getting this job. Okay. Rather than getting bothered, Laszlo, you see what it is that you haven't got that you want and then you start giving thanks, gratitude for them. You start living in the end as if you have them and then you surrender, let go and allow. Okay, you can do things without so much uh, because we do put in a lot of effort with this manifesting and it can get very, very intense. <laughs> so you accelerate a bit, you take your foot off the accelerator. You accelerate a bit, you take your foot off the accelerator. Okay. So that is the way to go about it. <laughs> Sage. Wisdom, if we manifest a specific person in a good positive energy but have a lower vibrational moment, not regarding the SP, just in life, does that affect the SP coming? I would say no because your general vibe and your good feeling about the topic of SP is pretty good or good. So I think you're okay there. It's when... Let's say this is one I see a lot, okay? I see people, they're making a lot of money and they're doing really well financially and they've got good thoughts, feelings and beliefs about money, but then when it comes to love and a specific person, 
they crash and burn because they're not in a state of love around that particular topic. So you can be doing really well on one topic and not so great on another one. So if you're lowering your vibe on a particular topic, it doesn't mean that that lower vibe is going to ooze out over the topic that you're doing pretty good on, okay? Because we have got different thoughts, feelings, and beliefs from our families, our culture, our country, our religion, our school. All of that affects what we believe about money, about job, about relationships, about being first best, second best. We collect a lot of this over time. So you may, may be excellent at one area and not great at another, and then you'll see your friend is doing really well on the area you're not good at, but then the area that you're good at, they're not good at at all. So it's all a collection that we get from childhood. It's all a collection that we get from all these experiences and influences, okay? So don't think every time something negative happens that you, you don't have to be perfect. 51%, Abraham Hicks talks about this. When I first heard that, I was like, oh, thank God. I don't have to do it perfectly all the time because we're not robots. We're actually emotional beings who go up and down as the day unfolds, as we get tired, as we, you know, have to output to parents or children or animals or we're sick or whatever. All these things affect our vibes. So it's just saying, what can I do right now to make myself feel better? Whoosh, you come back up and then something happens, bang with your boss at work. Oh my God, why have they said this? I now feel inadequate. And then you build yourself back up and then bang, something else happens. And, or you have a bad sleep because your neighbors have a party all night. And then you feel angry and resentful and you take that into work and then you have, you know, and then the chain reaction happens. But it doesn't mean there's something wrong. It's just we're human and we are moving in and out of these states all the time. So don't beat yourself up if you're not having a perfect 100% moment for the next week. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, Dr. Shar Bari, my pattern of stuff is like it takes three to five years with people whom I have a history with. Can I change that? I want to be married to someone who in the 3D doesn't seem interested in marriage. Okay. I'm going to read that again because I'm not 100% clear what you've said here. It takes three to five years with people whom I have a history with. Can I change that? It takes three to five years with people who you have a history with. I'm not clear about your question, darling. You can change things, but you've got to look at your repetitive, habitual, negative thoughts that you have about people. You've got in your mind it takes three to five years when you have a history with someone to, cor to correct a pattern? Is that what you're trying to say? Can you change a pattern? Yes. Even if it's someone you've known for a long time, yes, but you've got to stop doing what you're doing about them in your head. So I would write down a list of all the negative thoughts, feelings, and beliefs you have about particular people, and I would let go of it takes three to five years. It doesn't have to. It's that that's been your thought process about it. So it's a long process to unravel yourself when you've got history with someone, but it doesn't have to be that long. You just got to make a decision to change your mental diet about people and unhook yourself from the repetitive, habitual, negative thoughts. Everyone's us pushed out, you see. So whatever we experience is a big question to ask, and it is this. If that's in front of me with that person, what have I got going on within me that I need to dissolve, change my beliefs about, let go of, or clear from the inner child, clear as in the old emotions that the past is still alive and I'm still dragging around, okay? Now, you said, I want to be married to someone who in the 3D doesn't seem interested in marriage, okay, but we cannot force, we can influence, but we can't force, so the idea is to get into a state of love and to radiate love out and to surrender and let go, okay? So with, with any kind of marriage relationship, there's two people and they have, in my opinion, and there's lots of coaches and YouTubers that disagree, people, in my opinion, have free will. We can influence through the state of love. We can often and I have done this in my own life, ended up with my specific person who said to me, you're not for me, you're not for me. 
So I know that you can influence because I've done it and I'm still in that relationship over 10 years later. But there was no control or, you know, get them to conform and all this stuff that I see that I find truly quite offensive because I wouldn't want someone to try and get me to conform and I would not put that onto anyone that I love. I would never treat someone that I love with those types of words. So you can influence through, the best way to influence is for you to get yourself into a state of love and to hold it and to radiate love out because that person's teaching you the biggest lesson of love of all, which is to love with no condition or to love under all condition. And in this case, he or they, because I don't know if it's a man or a woman, are not interested. Does that mean they never will be? No, things are not set in stone. However, if you really love someone, you will love them irregardless of the condition. Okay? It's the greatest lesson in love, a specific person who doesn't want you for the moment. And my specific person turned around because I let go of trying to get anyone to conform and try and get them to do anything because there's nothing loving about that at all. That is absolutely, I just want to get what I want and I don't care what you want. And why would you do that to someone that you love? You wouldn't if you really loved them. So the lesson in maturing in your state of understanding of how to love is very much about getting your foot off the back of people's neck, including using manifestation techniques, in my opinion. Okay, good question. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple more and then I'm going to go and spend a bit of time with my mum because <laughs> I've brought her back to London with me. Okay, oh, I've lost the question. Here we go. F2P, Ethereum. My SP is not with me now. She blocked me and said she lost interest in me in long distance and it feels a burden to keep it. Okay, I'm not crying and I'm not able to believe she can come back. Well, this is a photograph of what's going on now, but energy moves. It's not stagnant. So, again, the lesson is loving under all conditions, not loving just because someone loves you back. You learn to love. You practice love. You love from a distance. You love when someone's not loving you. It's even when people die. You can still love someone when someone dies. It's not the love is in you. It, they don't walk away and it's two suitcases and then the love disappears. The love was in you when they were in front of you. The love is in you when they're not in front of you. You just got to get better at calling it up and holding the state of love. And that is the lesson that we must all learn, is holding the state of love irregardless of what they are doing, they being whoever your love interest is. Okay? So practice. There's meditation called Generating Love. There's a music one. There's a voice-only one. There's another one called Amazing Love. There's another one called Creating Love. There's a few in that series. There's Creating Love 1, 2, 3, I think. Go through, practice these meditations to learn to call up love within you and then you will be able to no longer be dependent on someone giving it to you and that's when people give it to you. That's how you get there. <laughs> Okay. Minotti, if you ask a question, you're going to have to ask it soon, darling, because I'm going to log off in a few minutes. <laughs> Bianca, I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> Miriam, hello. It's been a while. Big hugs, my lovely. Nice to see your name in the thread here. Okay. Manel, you've said there is a job dating event coming up on Thursday. I've not meditated for a job. What should I do? There's a job dating event. Okay. I don't, I don't know what that means, Manel. <laughs> is it to do with dating or is it to do with work? Um, you said I've not meditated for a job. What should I do? Well, really, Manel, it's always the same. Get clear about what you want. Pull your focus away from what you don't want. Get the good feeling of focusing on the thing you desire. 
flood your body with the relaxation and the, ah, I love thinking about having that. And then you do the thing that's the hardest to do. You surrender and you let go, which is what is letting go? It's putting your full focus on something else. That's what letting go is. It's let go of the preoccupation. Say to yourself, I've done enough and I'm going to have faith and trust. I'm going to practice that I will be successful before I'm successful. What do I mean? That you will feel the freedom of the anguish of not having what you desire before you get what you desire. That is the greatest thing of all. You really are looking for X, Y, Z because you think it's going to make you feel a certain way. But if you can feel that certain way now, you've taken a shortcut through the back door. Okay? So I hope that answers your question. I'm a little bit confused about your job dating event thing. (laughs) But I hope that answers your question. Okay, so, okay, I'm just looking at the next little bit. I also tried meditating, but my mind keeps going back and forth between finding a job at where I am or finding a job in another region. Both are super appealing to me. No problem. Imagine both. You can split your imaginal scene into two halves. Enjoy the first half of the first thing you said. Enjoy the second half of the second thing you said. You know what? It's like throwing out seeds into a garden. Let's see which ones sprout first. Enjoy that doesn't always have to be it's just this okay have fun you may get more than one offer you may get wow this sounds good and that sounds good which one am I going to choose I've got choice okay so my pleasure Tiva my pleasure (laughs) Miriam your skin looks so beautiful Miriam I'm doing a little experiment at the moment I'm doing castor oil for 30 days and I am on day number four. So, yeah, I've been in Australia. I've been in the sun a lot. I have used sunscreen. However, Australian sun is incredibly strong and there is a lot of melanoma. Someone six Every six hours someone dies of melanoma in Australia, melanoma cancer. So, I'm doing a little um, castor oil experiment, which I will report on in about a month's time. I'm going to do 30 days and then I'm going to tell you all the benefits of what's happened. But it's interesting. You've already noticed it. And I'm pretty tired right now because I've come from Australia and it's a 30-hour trip and I've been a bit wiped out. So, yeah, that means it's already doing a good job. Okay, last question. Uh, I'm going to answer these last two because Douglas, yours is quite short. Douglas Jones, is it normal to fall flat on your face at times, so to speak? Oh, my goodness, Douglas. All you got to do is look at my personal romantic relationship success stories. There's about me falling on my face five times. So absolutely, darling. How do we find the patience? I don't think you have to have patience. I think sometimes you just need to scream in the car, scream into a pillow, go to the gym and use the punching bag. (laughs) Life has a way of winding us up, even those of us that can be calm and reasonably grounded. Life has a way of um, giving us a good little old poke in the ribs sometimes, Douglas, so It is totally normal to fall flat on your face. I think these are the moments that humble us and remind us that although we can practice manifesting, we can practice loving, we can practice gratitude, we can practice all these things, there are moments where you want to scream your head off at someone and just run down the street and never come back. That's normal. I think that's normal. So embrace your falling flat on your face as best you can, roll over on your back and stay there and say, I'm not getting up until I feel like it. And it's all right to feel that way. I think it's just accepting that we are human and we're not all Zen. And, you know, whether you live in the city, the country, alone, with family, with people that aggravate you, we all have things coming at us that are challenging. 
So just give yourself some compassion that you're doing the best you can and just be okay with the turtle wins the race. Big hugs, darling. And Rose, I'm going to answer your final bit that you've written here. My SP is someone I've been seeing and we went on a weekend away, but he was distant after the trip. He said he felt odd about continuing because he works with my ex. He said we will talk in a few months. Okay, Rose, well, then you go, okay. If you still like him, you go, he'll be back. And you just go, I'm going to go and enjoy myself with my friends and I'm going to go and do things that make me feel good. I'm going to walk on the beach. I'm going to go and enjoy beautiful food. I'm going to enjoy my neighbourhood. I'm going to enjoy the joy of spring or autumn or summer or winter, whatever season you're in. I'm going to look for the best in everything. And you know what? He'll be back. And I'm going to get into a state of love that it will not matter to me if it's a few months, a few weeks or a few days because I'm in charge of my sense of love, my source of love. It's between me and God, me and infinite intelligence, me and the universe, whatever word you prefer, and I am going to become the most loving, radiant being that I can become because that is a choice I make and that is something that I can do irregardless of what he does. And he didn't walk away with the love. He didn't walk away with the joy. He just went away for a little while. But there's so much love in the world and I know how to access it. So take your time. And when you're in that place, hmm, can we go away for another weekend? I've been thinking about our weekend. It was really good. That's the stuff you hear. Get yourself mentally and emotionally right and then the outside with people takes care of itself. So big hugs, everyone. Remember that love is within. Make your work be getting into a state of love and let everyone else off the hook. No one has to do anything to make me feel loved. No one has to do anything to make me feel happy. No one has to do anything to make me feel good. And then you become sought after and you become so wonderful to be around that you're going to have to go, oh, I just want to be alone a bit because so many people want to be around you when you're like that because so few people are. So I hope that's helped. Lots of love. I'll see you all soon. I will be doing these um, at the same time every Sunday or every second Sunday. I have got my mum here, so I am taking her around a bit. So it will either be every week around this time or every two weeks for a while. All right. Have a good rest of day, morning, noon or night, wherever you are, and I will see you really soon.